CBMS boreholes were managed by a community, and it was a community's responsibility to repair. They would call any HPM, hand pump mechanic, to gun repair their source. A series of these sources were not performing at their best, and uh, therefore Jake got concerned and said we need to make sure that the sources are still functioning. Through this assessment, it was realized that there was a missing gap here, a missing link between the roles and responsibilities at the various levels. And when that was realized, JECA commissioned what we are calling now a technical cooperation project. So this project started five years ago, started this project at the time. So JICA tried to improve the CBM system, CBMS system. But uh, we found that that is very difficult to improve the uh, present system, CBMS. There are so many breakdowns and the finances that are available are limited. So it means that some sources could even go into the next year without being attended to. People could move like five kilometers carrying water throughout the whole day on your head, more over that water. Every year we lose between six and eight people eaten by crocodiles, and those are adults. Most of them are adults and women. If you go to a rural school, if one person has diarrhea, there are chances that many of them will have diarrhea. And then you lose time, you have no treatment, you lose time going to school. So we said, okay, this has to stop. Let us introduce a system where there is direct contact. We had to choose the project area. So we chose Mubende to be our epicenter. We are now introducing the district direct management system, we call it the DDMS. Well, the caretaker at a given source reports directly to the service center. After this call, the service center has been reacting to assess and repair these boreholes. The service center takes charge on behalf of the district. So it helps us in a way of putting in purchase purpose in the boreholes is guaranteed. Compared to the other system, where we had each of the villages getting parts anywhere they felt like getting them. And in a way, they would get fake fake and uh, not durable parts. If I call now, in the evening, people have come. If not, then the next morning, they're already here. So, service center has done a lot of good things for us. If a breakdown has happened, we get the information from the caretakers about this and this has broken, the water is not coming, because for them, they don't know what is happening within the source. Helping many people feel good, because in communities we need each other. People would pay the 2,000 shillings per month, and not all of them would pay. Some few would pay and the others would just jump that one and say, no, I'm not going to pay, but I keep on fetching. Even those people from the service center would say, please caretaker, where is the money? Where is this one? Ah, they haven't paid me. So when I was a JICA volunteer in 2018, I was working with Gomba District Water Office. We discussed what, how can we repair the borehole. So when the borehole was done again, it was very disappointing. So if we want to make it fair, it means uh, people can pay for what they use. I was thinking about the solution for each point. Then yeah, I came up with Sunda. Sunda is a prepaid system for all rural water sources. 
so that people can pay for what they use. We are installing Sundernit on the existing hand pumps. Each household gets an ID tag and the user can pay and charge on their ID by mobile money. So they can dial star 217 star 288 hash, then they can follow the process. The user can bring the tag and insert into orange box. Then the orange box can identify the ID and also the balance of their water. So they can fetch water accordingly. If there is no money on the tag, the valve is closed and water is not coming out. So there are solar panel and battery which are powering the Sunday unit. And Sunday unit is connected to data server through internet. So we can see water usage and monitor each borehole status from anywhere. We need to have one community meeting before installing Sunda. And people need to understand how the system is and how the operation or how the payment will be changed. Originally, people were skeptical. But through sensitization that has been done by the service center, people are taking it up now. They are owning it because now they have gotten to know the advantages of this system. We the, the benefit of DMS here is that you are able to benefit from your neighbor's contribution. And of course, the next month, in case it happens in the next community, then the same collection is going to be utilized to repair the other communities. The DMS is an equivalent of an insurance policy because it guarantees the source functionality. The magic with Sunda is that uh, once the source breaks down, immediately the highest planning authority gets to know. At the ministry, we have this dashboard and we're able to know that this source has broken down at this day and at this moment. The Sunda initiative is collecting a lot of information, which is actually live information. But this information can benefit probably UBOS in terms of population and planning. Minister of, of Health is able to predict the diseases that appear in these communities. Minister of Finance, for them to plan for roads, they know how many people are here, what they grow and so on. So we can use this system to collect more data. So our, our target is to expand Sunda to reach every corner of this country because Sunda is giving us the ability to know how much water is used. It's going to giving us the ability to see the quantity that is used by a household. It's giving us the ability to collect the revenue and keep it safe. We are planning to expand our solution to outside of Uganda, like Kenya, Rwanda, or like Senegal. <laughs> yeah, there are many countries uh, having similar issues on water sources. But now we have water nearby and clean water, so people are very happy and I'm so happy seeing that the people are getting clean water.